It's like a carnival of adulteration. There's no government standards for anything. <laughs> There was an insane amount of food fraud in the late 19th century. We had just opened up this candy box of new industrial chemicals, formaldehyde, sodium benzoate, borax. Borax is the stuff that I use to scrub out my sink or to, you know, put on the counter to keep the ants away. You're saying people put that in food intentionally. Yes. I actually kind of love the borax story because they discovered these huge mining opportunities with borax out in California, and they discovered that it also had some antiseptic qualities, right? It was antimicrobial. And it doesn't taste that bad, which is one of the things that's really important. They put it in butter going to England. You actually had them say, oh, the British love the taste of borax in their butter, right? It was a fairy. This is a wonderful thing, and everything tastes better with borax. Because they were using borax and then, of course, formaldehyde, which is an embalming fluid, they started calling these preserved products embalmed beef, embalmed milk. One of the manufacturers, when he was talking about the use of borax in meat, would say, we all eat embalmed beef, and we love it. Embalmed beef. Like, what a horrible thing to say about what you're eating. Coffee. Coffee was simply a mix of a little coffee and a lot of fake, and people would char bones and crumble them in. They would dye sawdust, often with lead-based <laughs> blacking compounds, and mix that in. And so people would actually speculate that the whole origin of the phrase, a muddy cup of coffee, came from the fact that you were drinking mud. 